Hey Pop Tropicans, it's Captain Crawfish. Today I'm gonna help you play through Timmy Failure Island, newest island on Pop Tropica, based on the hilarious series of books by Stepin Pastis. If you're not a fan of the Timmy Failure books yet, we hope you will be by the time you finish playing this island. As always, this video contains spoilers, so if you don't want to know what happens, or if you want to figure it out for yourself, wait to watch the video until later. Now let's get started. I've actually jumped ahead a bit here because there's a, an introductory cinematic that you don't need to know in order to know how to beat the island, so I will let you discover that for yourself. Here I am on Main Street, talking to Timmy Failure, hiding behind a bush here. He says his pants are missing, and there's nobody that he can trust except you. You being a good Pop Tropican, of course you're willing to take the case. Timmy will give me a page from his detective log in order to help me out. This is something that is going to be repeated throughout the quest. You'll find pages for the log, and Timmy will show up and give you pages from the log. Each one will introduce a certain character, or contraption, or situation, and that will tell you what you need to do to investigate to move the story forward. So the first page, for instance, has to do with this polar bear total, who Timmy says is usually hanging out at his house. So that's your first clue, is we'll go to Timmy's house and look for total. After this little gag with Timmy and his Mr. Froggy underpants. Uh, to get to his house, we're gonna head to the left. As we go that way, we'll go past a few of the characters that you'll be coming in contact with later. Because my job is to help you get through this quickly, I won't stop now, but you can talk to them. I'm also going to grab this pole from the school scene. We'll need it a little bit later. And just for fun, I'm going to go down the slide. Past another character from the Timmy universe, Molly Moskins, and into Timmy's house. A couple things happening here. First, I'm going to pick up this permanent marker, once again, because I'll need it later. Next, I'll jump on this little motorized vacuum and up on top of the fridge. Total is eyeing this cabinet, but it's locked up tight. I need to find my way into the cabinet. Before I leave here, I'm also going to go up to the second floor and push this scarecrow-looking fella out the window. Outside, I'll pick up the mask, and this belongs to Garbanzo Man, about whom we will learn a little more later and go to the left again into this nice looking estate and talk to the gardener. His name is Bingo. You don't actually need to talk to him in order to move the quest forward here, so again, to be quick, I'm gonna go up here, but it, you know, it's worth talking to everybody on this quest because it's funny. Pick up his gardening shears after he drops them in disgust and head back to Timmy's house. Now you know we rarely use items for their intended function on Pop Tropica. So once again, I'm gonna jump on top of the fridge, and when I get up there, I will use the gardening shears in order to cut my way through that child lock. In there I'll find a box of crispy rice treats. Total loves these. Total loves any kind of food. When you use these items, you'll be able to get Total to follow you or call Total from wherever he might be just by using them. So it happens automatically the first time. In the future, if I want to do that, I'll equip the item then press the space bar in order to call Total. Here's Timmy with another page from his detective journal. For this one, he's going to introduce a contraption that he needs built, which he calls the Lazy Bear 2000. This is sort of a surveillance camera thing that will allow him to keep an eye on total. It's a page in his journal, of course. When he gives it to me and it opens up, you'll see the three things in red are the things I need. A camera and a box and a marker. I already have the marker. Now I can go get the other two things. I'm heading all the way to the right of Main Street here because the next scene to go to is the zoo, which has a page from its detective log. This one introduces Karina. Karina, Timmy's rival, who has her own detective agency headquartered on Main Street, so we'll want to head there next. Uh, a couple more things to do here. One is pick up that bucket. The other is now that I have Total with me, Stacy the polar bear at the zoo is playing with the ball to try to mock him, basically. She's not a very nice bear. I can get the ball, though, by equipping that pole that I picked up earlier. By pressing that button with the pole, I'll turn the fans on and off. What I want to do is get the ball blowing toward me when Stacy hits it. And there, I pick it up, and I'll be able to use that shortly. 
You probably noticed that funny looking little guy in front of Karina Karina's headquarters holding a box of surveillance equipment. We can't get it from him directly, but here's something else Total can do. If he's with me and I click on a trash can, he'll pick it up and eat it, which turns his stomach into a trampoline. That sends me up here to get another page from the detective log. This time, oh, there's an introduction to Garbanzo Man. I have the mask already. If you were playing through yourself, you may not have gotten it yet. I can keep moving up and to the left. And I'll be a, oh, a screwdriver. Yeah, see, I can just grab all this equipment off a construction site. I'm glad nobody needs to use it. Um, over to the left is an open window of the bank building that I can go into. You click to enter the window, then if you walk to the left, you'll drop down to the first floor. Now if I come out the door, I'll write at this guy, his name is Scooter Row Holmes. I'll startle him a little bit, and he sort of indicates, well, if I didn't look so unthreatening, he might really have been scared. Now we know about Garbanzo Man, we know that I have the mask that I can put on, so there may be a way that I can convey a sense of fearsome greatness and get Scooter Row to drop the thing he's holding. So I'll do this again, but first, I'm going to put on the mask, and then I'll show you how that goes. Nailed it! And now I can pick up the camera. So I have the marker in the camera. I still need the box. So I'm gonna head left, run past this kid, and I'm gonna go all the way back to that estate scene you remember from earlier, where I got the gardening shoes. When I arrive, Timmy is standing, and you see, you may not have noticed the first time through, there is a box that looks like it might fit the bill. It's too high to reach, we can't quite get it. But we have one ace up our sleeve, and that is if we use this ball, can kick it off Timmy's head, it'll bounce straight up and knock down the box. Having picked up the box, now I have everything that I need in order to make the lazy bear, so I'll go back to Timmy's house to do that. All you need to do to assemble the Lazy Bear 2000 is to head over there and use any of the items. So I'll use the box. As soon as I do that, my character will put all three things together and construct it right there. That's another ad objective achieved, which brings Timmy here once again and to give me another page for the detective log. This one is going to introduce that kid we've seen in the school a couple of times, Rolo Tukas. What we learn about him is that he is a very nervous student whose head shakes whenever he has a test coming up. That may seem like useless information, but trust me it is not. And let's go to the school and talk to Rolo Tukas. Slight problem, he's stuck in the slide. To get him out, we'll use one of the crispy rice treats that we have and use it at the top of the slide. Total will chase the treat in there and knock Rolo out. Unfortunately, Total now is stuck, and I certainly need his help if I'm going to finish this adventure. Maybe with some kind of shaking or vibration we could get Total out of the slide. I know that I can get Rolo's head to shake if he thinks there's a test, so I'm going to talk to him now. This is a little mini game that works like this. If you can make him more anxious about the test, his head will shake more. If you make him less anxious, his head will shake less. You have three options every time he asks a question. One of them will make him more nervous and the other two won't. Uh, so it's just trial and error. I mean, you can just pick the ones I'm picking, but if you get it wrong, you'll just have a chance to restate the question so you can just sort of guess your way through. As you see, as he gets ner more and more nervous, his head shakes more and more and more. When we get to the last question, he shakes so hard that he pries Total Loose, who comes flying out of the slide. All's well that ends well for Rolo. There's not really a test tomorrow, so he calms down. And behind Total came a page from the detective log. This page introduces a character that we have seen, and if you're playing this for yourself, you may have talked to her already. Molly Moskins, who has a crush on Timmy, therefore arousing his suspicions. She has a cat named Senor Burrito. Senor Burrito is actually a girl, and Senor Burrito is missing. Molly is looking for help finding Senor Burrito. She thinks only Timmy can help her, but with you on the case, that may not be the true. Senor Burrito is trapped in the vending machine at the bowling alley. The bowling alley only accepts exact change, and Molly has only bills. So she can't just go 
get Senor Burrito out of the machine. You offer to take the money, but she says she's not going to give up her money that easily, which, compared to what a lot of people in Pop Traffic could do, that is completely reasonable. If I can find something that she wants to buy, then she'll give me the money. You remember it said in the detective log that she likes shoes, put that together with Timmy's office being in what appears to be a shoe closet. There's no key, but if we look in the recording of the Lazy Bear 2000, we'll see that the RoboVac vacuum cleaner went over the key and now is stuck. I can head over there to pick it up, but I need something to open it. If you haven't picked up the screwdriver yet from the building on Main Street, go do that. Then use the screwdriver to open the RoboVac and get the key. Use the key to open the closet door. And then you will see a pair of nice red shoes, which you can just take from Timmy's mom, right? She won't mind. Pick up the shoes and take them back to Molly, who is going to be in the same spot at the school. Open up your inventory, give Molly the shoes, and in return she will give you some money. Still just bills though, you're going to have to figure out a way to turn these bills into change. Again, as Pop Tropica puzzles go, that one is pretty straightforward. If we head to the zoo, we can use the money at the cart to buy some chicken nuggets. And this is actually a twofer. We'll give her the money. Not only do we get chicken nuggets, we also get the change that we wanted. It's pretty efficient if you ask me. Now we can head to the bowling alley, where poor little Senor Burrito is stuck in the vending machine. That is a sad, sad sight. No problem, we've got the exact change. We'll use that, and that will set Senor Burrito free. And again, another dual action result here. Not only do we get Senor Burrito the cat, we also get some bonbons, and these will help us get through some of the other parts of the adventure, and I will obviously get to that momentarily. We head back to the playground, and now we can give Senor Burrito the cat back to Molly Moskins. We have certainly helped a lot of people out here today, but we're not even close to finishing this yet. After giving this to Molly, there goes a trash truck passes with something suspicious sticking out the back. Automatically your character will head to Timmy's street to investigate, get a little information about where Timmy might be. He's on top of the skyscraper that he thinks will one day be his headquarters. Uh, but we move to the left here, and the truck is gone, but there is a new page on top of this house. We can't jump up there directly. What we can do is go to the trash can outside of Timmy's house, click on it, Total will eat it, and now we can jump off of his belly onto the roof and make our way across the rooftops. A little bit of a dangerous jump there, almost missed it, let me try again, and pick up this page. The page confirms what we might have suspected, which is that Timmy's pants have been thrown away because they are so ratty and disgusting, and that means they are on the trash truck. We need to find some way to get after the trash truck. Now Molly Moskin said that Timmy was on top of this tower, this skyscraper. So let's make our way up there. Once again, call Total into the scene, get him to eat the garbage, bounce off his belly. Now we'll head upward, and this time, instead of going left to the bank like we did before, we're gonna continue going straight up into a new scene at the top of this building. On our way up, we get another helpful piece of equipment, a rope. It's just sitting there. Nobody's gonna need that on scaffolding. Um, we'll head to the right. You notice you need to be a little bit careful in the way you make your way up this building. You just need to step only on those solid looking window ledges, climb up the vines that you see. It's not hard, nothing bad will happen to you if you fall. It's just a little bit of fun and adventure. And now we'll talk to Timmy. We think the pants are in the trash truck. He can see it from there. You need to catch up with it somehow. He suggests using the car that belongs to Crispin Flavius, his mother's boyfriend, who is probably at the bowling alley. Uh, sort of like Anton Chekhov would have said, if we're gonna dangle a bowling alley in front of you early in the quest, we're sure as heck gonna let you bowl later in the quest. There's only one problem so far. 
can't get past the attendant unless I find some way to distract her. Now you remember those bonbons that I got out of the machine earlier. This is where those are going to start to come in handy. If I call Total and then equip the bonbons and throw one, he will start dancing with joy. That distracts the attendant enough that I can get past her and start talking to Crispin. We have our usual trash-talking braggadocio in Pop Tropica. This guy is so confident in his bowling ability that he... I don't even ask. He just offers me his car keys if I can beat him. And that will start this bowling minigame. All you have to do to win this is beat his score of 30 pins. Now my hot tip here is this. If you hold down the mouse button, the ball won't roll. It's only when you release the mouse button that the ball will roll. So rather than clicking and releasing, which might mess up your timing a little bit, hold the mouse button down, and then when the bowling ball is right in the center, release there. It's actually not too hard to beat Crispin's score. I've already tied it with one throw left, so I'm not even going to try too hard this time. Crispin is at least a man of his word, and he does give his car keys to me, a child. <laughs> and then once I get them, I will head back out onto Main Street. His car is the one that is parked right out in front. All I need to do is use the car keys out of my inventory, and I will get in and ride off to save the day. In the world's most foreseeable consequence, I crash into the house of Timmy's teacher. He's a guy who just can't win. And worse for me, I can't now go after the trash truck. So Timmy shows up, having presumably witnessed the whole thing from afar. And he has one more idea. An idea in the form of a detective log page. So he talks about something called the Total Mobile and hands me the page that has the directions for how to build the total mobile. Uh, as with the Lazy Bear 2000 earlier, if I look in this page, it will show me all of the things that I need in order to make this machine. I have most of them already. I have the pole, the chicken nuggets, the rope, and total. What I don't have is the wagon. If you remember, there was a wagon to the left by the gardener. Bingo the gardener hates me. In no way will he just lend me his wagon. If I distract him, I can probably take it. You remember how we did this the last time. We summon Total into the scene with the crispy rice treats, then equip the bonbons, and toss one right down his throat. When he starts to dance, I can go past Pingo and get the wagon. That's everything that I need to make the Total Mobile. I'll head back to Timmy's street. Now when I run into Timmy, we are just about ready for the end game. little time sensitive. The trash truck is still around, which is great. They certainly do appear to be Timmy's pants, but there is his arch rival, Karina Karina, riding her bike after the trash truck. We could just let her go get them, but he knows something else is afoot, so we're going to instead race after the trash truck. You got your awesome ch scrolling chase scene here with garbage falling out the back of the truck. Your task here is just to move and avoid the trash, which you'll see I'm not doing such a phenomenal job of doing here. Um, total runs at a constant speed. You can just move him up, down, left, and right. The trash comes out in sort of a slow arc, so just watch it as it comes out and move to a place that it isn't. And after you've avoided it for long enough, there will be a hilarious conclusion. that all crashes, we end up back where we were at the beginning of the quest, which is the part that I so conveniently skipped over when this walkthrough video began. This is all just a dialogue scene. There's nothing more for you to do as the player except enjoy it and bask in your victory. At the end of this conversation, you will be given the island medallion. does it for Timmy Failure Island. 
the fourth book in the Timmy Failure series, Sanitized for Your Protection, comes out on October 6th. If it's anything like the first three, it's going to be fall out of your chair funny. We are so glad we had an opportunity to work in the Timmy Failure world for a while. We hope that you enjoyed playing Timmy Failure Island as much as we enjoyed making it. As always, thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you for playing Pop Tropica. We'll see you for the next island.